All righty, it's been a hot minute since we've uploaded a video to Amusement Insiders. I'm not gonna get into why that has been quite yet, um, but we are working on a very big announcement for the channel. With that being said, many of you know, uh, we recently got to go to La Ronde, located in Montreal, Quebec. Um, for those of you that don't know, and for those of you that do know, um, La Ronde tends to be one of the most hated on parks out there, or at least in the YouTube world, that's what it seems. A lot of people who have visited La Ronde have given it a very poor rating, and truthfully, going to be extremely transparent in this video, before coming here, I was definitely planning on not liking this park. Um, I was already planning with my team the proper and the uh, right way to approach uh, not liking this park in a YouTube video. And I, I was ultimately preparing for a really poor visit. That being said, it was everything but. It was honestly a really awesome time. Everyone in our crew that was at this park had an absolutely amazing time. and. Almost in every single category that this park has been reviewed in the roller coaster community, we found it to be quite the opposite. So I'm going to give my personal perspective and opinion on um, a couple areas surrounding La Ronde, um, and uh, I just want everyone to know that while I'm reviewing uh, La Ronde and touching on certain areas, I'm not attacking anyone else's opinions. I'm not going after anyone, it's simply kind of like my opinion and my perspective on the issue and honestly my advice on how to have an amazing time. I just want to also say for any locals to La Ronde, I extremely apologize if I mispronounce any of the ride names or the park um, or if I uh, just screw up anything in this video. So feel free to comment down below um, if uh, I got anything wrong. Um, with that being said, let's start with the locals. So, my family's half French Canadian, and I do know going to Montreal, Quebec, you can have an extremely difficult time with language. I personally and my family do not speak French. I do, I'm not fluent in French. I do not understand it. Um, and uh, it's unfortunate. I wish I did. Uh, but um, I do know you can have an extremely difficult time with locals. With that being said, um, it is Quebec, it is a French speaking province. Um, and anytime you go to any other place that their main language isn't English and you're traveling there as a, a luxury, you do have to understand that. So um, any comments or reviews from other YouTube channels about a language barrier or attitude with English versus French, in my opinion, isn't uh, valid and it's not a, a reason to complain. Uh, again, you chose to go to a French-speaking like province, or if you go to a French-speaking country or a different uh, country that doesn't speak English, you have to understand like you're going to have a huge language barrier, and you have to plan around that and how to be more accommodating and how to be more accepting and understanding. It's not their job uh, to speak your language or to work around you. It's your luxury to be traveling to this place. With that being said, Six Flags La Ronde was extremely amazing in terms of this. There were several incidences where we would walk up or a security guard or someone would come up to us and they would talk French and they would almost immediately, I guess just by our eyes being so confused, understand that, hey, okay, they don't speak English and immediately switch to English. Um, we did learn. Um, that it is a requirement for people working at La Ronde to speak both English and French for safety reasons, and that makes sense. But nonetheless, uh, we were very, very thankful for that. And you have to understand, like, you have to also put yourself out there to be uh, extremely accepting. So, you know, we would thank them in French. And, uh, you know, you learn the simple word thank you with a Google search, or you just know it because you're Canadian. But uh, you, you say thank you, and it's just like, if you treat them nicely, they're going to treat you nicely. That's how it works in customer service. So I just wanted to tackle that part of the visit first, just because we had heard so much from different people um, and different YouTube channels about the language barrier. And uh, we experienced no rudeness from any employee at Six Flags at all. We did experience a lot of rudeness from employees or workers outside of uh, Six Flags, so in the Montreal area, we did experience a lot of that. Um, 
Moving on to another area. So again, I just want to touch on, we're not going to review this park COVID wise because my review is about the park um, and not about how they're handling COVID. I do want to quickly touch, since I did bring that up, that park security and park employees are handling COVID extremely well. Um, they have were getting people to put on their masks. They were calling people out. They were driving up to people and immediately getting them to put their mask on or above their nose. They would even stop the rides if someone removed their mask or slow the ride down until they put the mask back on and then uh, turn on its cycle again. The guests were not social distancing at all. So we had to do our part and we kept ourselves social distance. And uh, we would, uh, unfortunately it did uh, get to a point where we did have to kind of yell at some people or get rude. And uh, I do not apologize for that. In a time like this, it is okay to be rude, to keep yourself safe and others safe as well. So there were very, uh, there were a lot of instances where we were almost fighting people at this park. And <laughs> but nonetheless, I it, it, most of them were teenagers, but we were definitely getting very rude. Like if you're gonna get close to us, put your mask on or back up, please. And when they wouldn't listen, it ended up in like a bit of a fight. It's okay though, um, a very safe park. Again, you just have to, if you man your ground, you're gonna be fine. Moving on, the aesthetic and beauty of the park. It is honestly such an underrated park. Okay, you heard it here first. La Ronde is extremely underrated. It is absolutely beautiful. There are obviously areas that aren't that beautiful, but you can go to any theme park and find areas that are not that beautiful. The park is stunning. Um, there are areas that are better looking than a lot of parks out there and again like as I just said there are areas that aren't and that's fine Lots of theme parks are like that But I found overall especially the Ednor area and the dragon area like absolutely stunning I loved this little sit-down area that kind of like overlooked the lake and you could see a vampire um, and Titan that was such a beautiful area as well. That was one of my favorite places. Go grab like a drink or a beverage and food, just sit there. Uh, I love the station and the entrance sign to Goliath. Absolutely amazing. And some of the flat rides at this park, awesome. Again, as you can tell, I had a really good visit and I was going in expecting the absolute worst, um, which maybe helped my case. So for those of you that don't know me, when I go to a theme park, and something wows me or something I wasn't expecting happens, like the park immediately becomes one of my favorite parks. I love that. I love going to a place and something happens that you weren't expecting or something amazing was there that you weren't expecting. Like that's, it's just so awesome. I remember Dollywood was like that for me. I rode, um, oh man, what tor Tennessee Tornado. And it was so smooth and the ride experience was just so awesome. Um, and I just remember that stuck with me, that ride right there, or the wild eagle on top of the mountain, and then even um, Thunderhead. Like, it was just so awesome. Those three rides really stuck with me, and the park beauty and the food. Which brings me to the food, the food at La Ronde. Okay, so if you grab your average theme park chicken fingers and fries, you're not gonna enjoy them. Don't, gra don't get that if you're going to La Ronde. They have so many, they have Fines Poutine, so go to Fines Poutine. And thank you to Jay from Instagram who suggested that for us. Uh, people in our group absolutely love that. So great suggestion and awesome restaurant. The fries almost look beer battered, like beer battered fries. And then the poutine looks awesome, greatly reviewed, awesome food. We got to go to a Lebanese food place. So thank you to Enzo. Um, for suggesting that as well. So you're gonna see a common trend here. Uh, locals and uh, new friends uh, introduced us and took us a tour around the park and showed us everything. Greatly benefited from that. So got to have some Lebanese, authentic Lebanese food uh, in La Ronde and that was absolutely amazing too. And then they have this crepe place that makes some amazing um, dessert crepes. Again, absolutely uh, amazing. So as you can tell, the food, greatly reviewed at La Ronde. And uh, I would definitely recommend Fines Poutine or the Lebanese place or the crepes place. I wouldn't recommend the lunch or dinner crepes from this crepe place, just the dessert. We did try the lunch and we weren't too uh, aesthetic about the, uh, sorry, <laughs> too happy and excited about that. But nonetheless, the food was definitely uh, out of this world for where we ate and uh yeah so again 
greenery. So the greenery at La Ronde, there is lots of trees. Uh, again, you're located right along the St. Lawrence River. They have almost like a little mini lake in the middle of their park, which does create that C formation. So you can't walk in circles like you can at other parks or do complete circuits. You have to go back and forth. And uh, this does lead me to an area where some other enthusiasts don't like that. And to that, uh, that's just something you're like, to me, like it didn't bother us. Going into the park before we were there, I did think it was gonna bother me, the back and forth walking, but we would just go to one side of the park, tackle it, go to the other side of the park, tackle it, and then we just picked which rides we liked the most and walked back and forth. We enjoyed some snacks, enjoyed the company of talking with our friends and some fans and people we met at the park and enjoying the beauty. This is where I think roller coaster enthusiasts honestly mess up when they visit a park. They're so focused on getting those credits and focused on rewriting rides, it leads them to almost review a park poorly because they kind of turn on these blinders to the overall beauty of a, a theme park. There's so much beauty at Iran that I think a lot of enthusiasts don't see and they miss. You got the amazing food, the greenery, those really well-themed areas, the beautiful uh, front gate structures for both entrances on the back and the front. Um, and there's just like hidden art around the park as well. It doesn't, like, as a roller coaster enthusiast, when you're hopping between Goliath and Vampyr and, you, and you're running back and forth, and yeah, it may seem like you're walking back and forth, but slow down. Just honestly, slow down. Grab like a snack, walk, grab like a, a beverage, and just enjoy it. Like, just take it all in. There's a lot to experience at a theme park other than roller coasters. Now, I'm not here saying a roller coaster enthusiast is in the wrong for doing so, just personally giving my opinion on how to maybe enjoy a theme park a little better if you just slow down and stop worrying about the credits. Like, obviously hit up every roller coaster that you can, but if you're gonna run back and forth between the two main attractions at La Ronde, yeah, that's gonna cause you a problem if you're running back between those two only all day. Um, but just slow down, take it all in. Um, I'm trying to think of what Next, really wowed me about Laron. I mean, the customer service at Laron was absolutely amazing. It's definitely in my top five parks um, that I've been to for customer service, which says a lot. Uh, but Goliath, honestly, was a lot better than I was expecting. When I watched YouTube videos on Goliath, uh, it was it didn't look like much. But a front row ride on this, and I'm here. I didn't get a night ride because I was so focused on getting my night rides on Vampire. Uh, night ride on this from what I heard from my team was absolutely amazing. It was like what made the experience for them and uh, My experience was night rides over at Vampire. That thing hauls. It had to do, oh my goodness I guess I should just get into the ride reviews. I'll, I'll finish with Goliath and I'll get to Vampire because I have a lot to say about Vampire. Vampire is what made this park for me But Goliath is absolutely gorgeous no matter where you look at it from around the park It reflects into the lake later on in the day it has a beautiful setting, an absolutely stunning uh, station. The entrance sign for Goliath is absolutely amazing. And the ride experience does pack a lot of floater airtime. So in terms of a hyper or a mega coaster, whatever you want to call it, it is strong. It's really strong. It's a great ride, great theming, um, and overall just a really great package. That brings me to Vampire. I don't like inverts. Many people called me out on Instagram in DMs being like, Brendan, how can you review Vampire so well if you don't like inverts? That's true, I don't like inverts. I have a blood flow problem, poor circulation. It runs in my family, it led to a problem on Green Lantern at Great Adventure, um, and it usually leads to discomfort when I ride inverts. And yes, I did experience some discomfort on Vampire, but that is my personal issue. That is not the ride's fault, that is a genetic personal issue in my family and for me. So I cannot use that against a ride. That, on the other hand, um, while riding Vampire, again, it had his, they have their winter wheels on and it was like 34 degrees Celsius without the Humidex. So we're looking at like 40 degrees Celsius with winter wheels on Vampire. The ride cycle, we timed it 33 seconds from dispatching the station to getting back into the station. So that says a lot, 33 seconds. Okay, I'm telling you it is one of the best rides I've ever been on with those winter wheels and at this current time It is the best roller coaster in Canada right now. I like it better than Yukon. I like it better than Leviathan I like it better than Behemoth 
this thing is absolutely insane. The maintenance on this thing is insane too. Um, you get the right team. The, the, Laron has these like team one, team two, um, team three type situations. Team one, I think, is the good one. I could be. I'm not okay. I'm not gonna touch on it because I could get that wrong. But one team will always have two trains on, and uh, one team only has one. And the, the the dispatches are insane, even with what's going on. And by the way, this park is cleaning their roller coasters on the hour every hour. We never saw anything where they weren't very sanitary, and uh, I mean they did it so quickly as well. So very impressed with that. But Vampire was amazing. I got off that thing. I was. I think I got ten plus rides. Um, on this visit. So I'm super excited uh, for when, what's next at La Ronde. I think there's a lot of great additions coming. So obviously you have Viper coming and then I think there might be an RMC in their future as well, whether that's an RMC conversion or just an RMC Raptor. I definitely see one of those coming to La Ronde at some point. I'm trying to think if I missed anything. Unfortunately, unfortunately, La Monstra wasn't open. It's down for upgrades, so they are doing some retracking on it. It is very small retracking, but they guess I guess they made the decision to do the retracking um, early on, just into spring or early summer, because they were still working on that. But yeah, unfortunately, that wasn't open. The worst ride that I rode at La Ronde during this visit would have to be Ednor. Uh, I had an issue where I had my back almost like pull out on that first inversion. I don't know what maintenance is doing with main maintaining this ride, but it seems like there's way too large of a wheel gap. Uh, my team and I came to the conclusion this was the problem. We felt the train literally like almost hitting walls during transitions. The wheel gap was too large even when you look at the, the wheels as you're on the ride. There's such a big wheel gap, and it was creating such discomfort where the train would like jolt up, down, sideways during too much. Um, it, that seems to have been the problem. It was definitely uncomfortable. I did not ride it once more after that because I honestly thought I was going to break my back during one of the inversions. And the less the ride, the rest of the ride, I was bracing um, for protection, pretty much. The next roller coaster that I really didn't enjoy was the Super Loop. The ride op was doing an absolutely amazing ride cycle with moving back and forth while upside down. So that was really cool to see. Um, but it was a little too long upside down, but that's what these rides are meant to do. The problem was, I think this was a used attraction. This is like their second newest attraction at La Ronde, or their newest? I'm not sure. One of the two. And it, it just, you could tell it was used. It was definitely uncomfortable, bumpy, and rattly. Um, and every, almost every single one of us on our team got sick after riding this, which was interesting. Maybe it was the poor decision of doing this, then the boomerang, then Titan. And after Titan, I was done for the day. I could not ride a single other ride. I had to sit there film while my team went and re-rode Vampire like several times because I was so close to just, yeah, just so close. Um, but yeah. Nonetheless, so they have a really cool um, kid ride there as well. I believe it's an Aero kid ride. Uh, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Beautifully themed. You get some good airtime in the back row. I didn't get to ride it because we had like the skinniest of people on our team almost status on this ride, uh, which means you're too big. So I was definitely not going to get on it, but we met up with some awesome fans, and uh, one of them's little brother got uh, everyone on the team on this ride, so that was so cool. But it's so beautiful the setting that this ride sits on and then in the back because it gets pulled over this really steep weird drop under that tunnel there uh you get some really cool airtime. the <laughs> I, I guess i'm not gonna review every ride but nonetheless again as you can tell it was a really good visit food amazing customer service amazing rides amazing the star flyer was fun the light night the the setting of that bridge at night with the rides in Titan and Vampire, absolutely gorgeous. The setting as the sun's slowly setting on their fake lake in the middle where they do their fireworks show, absolutely amazing. I can only imagine if I was there during their fireworks competition, how amazing of a visit that would be. Again, I keep hearing from people and locals there that you have to check out that park during the fireworks display. So if this was my home park, I wouldn't be listening to the YouTubers, honestly amazing park you have a lot to be uh, thankful for 
You have a lot to be super proud of, and you have a really bright future coming with the new Six Flags CEO. Sense of really bright future. This is an absolutely beautiful park, and you're gonna see in my construction update of this park a few things that I think are coming your way because there's construction markers and upgrades that are under uh, the works right now. Hopefully I reviewed everything perfectly. I just wanted to touch, again, I just really wanted to touch on, you can't go to La Ronde and expect them to speak English. You can't go to La Ronde and, and complain about the sea formation when you're just hitting up two roller coasters that are on the other end of the park. Go to a theme park and enjoy everything overall. And trust me, if you do that, you'll love this park. This park's definitely a little hidden gem and it is the most underrated theme park that I've heard discussed in the coaster community now that I've finally been there. And trust me, if you ask my team, I was honestly looking forward to hating on this park. I was so convinced by the YouTube videos out there that I was gonna hate this park, that I wasn't gonna like anything about it, and I was so excited to join that bandwagon. And I am so happy that I am not on that bandwagon. And I'm so happy that I actually had a great visit because it honestly made this past six months of being locked in my house so much better to be able to go somewhere and actually have an amazing time with friends. So hopefully this video, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I don't know if you made it. It ended up being a really long one. Oh my God, 21 minutes. I hope you're still here. But uh, nonetheless, this, that's my perspective of Six Flags La Ronde. It's honestly a little hidden gem. Go check it out. And if you're visiting from the States or visiting from outside of Quebec, please understand there is going to be a language barrier. Do your best to at least say merci at the end. That means thank you. Um, if someone has taken their time at Iran to speak to you in English, thank them in French, so merci. Um, and uh, again, if you just let them know that you speak English from what we experienced and you're polite about it, you say, oh, sorry, I'm so sorry, like, you know, we speak English, not French. They were so happy and super helpful um, during our visit. There were no problems whatsoever. So hopefully this video has um, given you guys some good advice if you visit and shed some good light and good vibes for Six Legs Around. It's honestly an amazing park. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And uh, hopefully you have or are having an amazing weekend. And uh, yeah, hopefully to see you soon in another video sometime soon. Have a good one, guys. Bye.